Hi, it's Robin. As you can probably tell, today is going to be a Christmas-themed variety show of sorts, showing a bunch of Christmas-related Commodore 64 things. Some are things I've made, such as some Commodore 64 songs, and the rest are things that other people have made, but they're some of my favorites throughout the years. So I'll be showing the thing. If I have any comments to make during or after, then I will. As always, there'll be an index so you can skip ahead if a certain section seems boring to you, you've seen it before, or you just don't like my singing or whatever. So the first thing we'll look at is the famous Commodore 64 Christmas demo, or its actual real name is the Commodore 64 Christmas album. This was released in 1982, just shortly after the Commodore 64 was released. So note for maximum effect is recommended that the audio output be connected to a high quality sound system. And you can choose to run it continuously, or what we'll do is just run once. So we'll press S and it'll load. The Commodore 64, press any key to start. And when I first heard this, this blew me away, this the snow, the wind. The accumulating snow at the bottom. <laughs> Season's greetings from Commodore. interesting that everything in this demo is just using Petsky graphics, the built-in character set, and some sprites in certain scenes. Some nice transitions between screens as well. And that flame sprite animation was also something that just amazed me when I was, you know, 11, 12 years old and first saw this, I think, in 1983. It was so realistic. <laughs> and that Santa sleigh sprite is pretty great too. It's actually multiple high res sprites overlaid with each other and then in this part expanded. And that stained glass window was also a pretty big deal to me again in 83. Frosty the Snowman. Those two dancing kids are pretty iconic to me. And then there's Frosty, he starts dancing too. So this very well may be the first Commodore 64 demo. And this is kind of bordering into what the demo scene eventually became. Of course, this was a commercial demo meant to help sell Commodore 64s. 
There's that CPM option, the perfect holiday gift. Now that only $895, I don't know if that's the Canadian price or where that number came from. The US initial sales price was $595. And this demo is partly in BASIC. We'll take a look at it. Right at the top here, the Commodore 64 Christmas Album. That's the official name of it. Music by Wayne Eastwood, Sprites and Screens, presumably the Petsky Graphics, H. Rex Boucher, or would it be Butcher if he's an American, and the programming by Stephen Murray. But just to look through the rest of the code, basically each of these lines here, there's the intro, are in machine language, and they're called with a sys command, and then various parameters are set, and then the demo and music is called. So it's essentially a basic framework that calls each of those songs and the corresponding pictures, animations, you know, Jingle Bells, Silent Night, and so on. <laughs> and the, the sales pitch. Well, they tell it like it is. And that's the whole program there. So as I said, all the rest of it is machine language. It's interesting how they used nice variable names like gate, and yet didn't put a space between poke and gate. I have a funny mix of clean and messy code. So to think that that high quality demo was produced in 1982, 39 years ago, just really set the precedent for the Commodore 64 in doing these sort of music and graphic demos. Of course, this was far, far eclipsed eventually, but it's an amazing start and is an absolute classic in my opinion. Okay, next up we have one of my Commodore 64 Christmas songs. These are songs that I wrote, some some of them with the assistance of my oldest daughter. You know, I, I wrote the music, I sing on uh, two out of three of them. And if you already know that you hate my music or whatever, just skip to the next chapter. I realize these are goofy. Some people might find them cringy, but they are meant in nostalgic fun and love of uh, of the computer and Christmas and those old days. So here we go, we'll watch it, and I have a few comments at the end. You kids and your Nintendos and iPods and Playstations. I didn't have any of that when I was a kid. But I'll tell you what I did want for Christmas. December 1982 I hoped that my dream would come true That there would be waiting for me A Commodore computer under the tree I want a Commodore 64 Christmas Lego's nice, Lego's fine, but it won't scratch this 8-bit itch of mine. It was December 1983, what would Santa bring for me? Would I finally get my wish, my very own computer with a SID chip? Commodore 64 Christmas I wanted and I got A 
Commodore 64 Christmas. Uh, this was recorded a number of years ago, and the kids are actually playing one of my games with Pixel Games called Bad Student Driver. The sound effects are games from our retro iOS games, most of which have now been removed from the App Store just due to the way that iOS and Android are just always getting updated and therefore wrecking compatibility with old software. It's really a shame all the great games, not just... I'm not just talking about my own games here, but many great games have been lost because of the way uh, these App Store apps just uh, get get removed or become uh, incompatible with modern devices. Uh, anyway, that's not what this is about, but that's where those sound effects come from. I thought it'd be funny if one of my kids actually held the PlayStation console instead of a controller. <laughs> And this whole awkward rant at the beginning is, I think, inspired by, uh, what is it, Twisted Sister? And, uh, you know, what are you going to do with yourself? It's like the old man rant about kids today. And then just kind of out of the blue and non sequitur, I start talking about what I wanted for Christmas. But I'll tell you what I did want for Christmas. This is my son, Ben, acting as Little Daddy, as he said where I want a Commodore 64 and I get Lego instead. Now, actually, this Lego set, 6950, the mobile rocket launcher or satellite launcher, depending on what region you were in, is one of my favorite Lego sets of all time, is one of my favorite Christmas gifts of all time. I actually love this set, but it's not a Commodore 64, is it? Ben really shows his displeasure with it. <laughs> but then to soften it, I have him play, uh, play with it a bit. And that star on top of the Christmas tree is actually the one from my childhood. It still works. And we set it up here every year. It uh, spins around just through the heat of the light bulb. And it just keeps working year after year. It's pretty amazing. Okay, stay tuned for the sequel to that one. Next up is Jingle Disc. And if you do find a copy of this to download, you have to load it with Jingle, comma, 8, comma, 1. Star does not work, or loading it with comma 8 does not work. If you're using a printer, turn it off. This card does not operate with a high-speed cartridge. Note, be sure to turn off your computer before removing the cartridge. So it actually does work with some high-speed or disk speeder cartridges. Right now I'm running it with my Easy Flash 3 with a super snapshot image on it. So it's Jingle Disc I originally bought in Zellers. Unfortunately, one of my greatest retro regrets was getting rid of it along with a bunch of other stuff sometime in the 90s. But it was a disc for sale, I believe, for $10. It came in a cardboard sleeve. It was also available for the Apple. But of course, it was the Commerce 64 version. I had actually the one disc may have had both versions on it. I can't remember if mine did. So I don't know for sure why I bought this. I guess I thought it would be cool to show my parents. Season's greetings. So this has two options, Jingle Tunes and Holiday Greeting. Holiday Greeting is kind of a very simple print shop style program for printing holiday cards which I didn't really care about then uh, or now, I guess. But the other is a Christmas demo in the same vein as the Commodore one we looked at. So let's try that. Jingle Tunes number one. Tis holiday time all around town with mistletoe and snow coming down. A fire in the hearth, a tree and more. You'll see it as you peek in the door. So obviously these are bitmap graphics. The animated snow overlaying the bitmap graphic is kind of impressive, but it's very much done in an Apple II kind of style. Kind of reminds me of the Home Alone house.
A cat is napping, so let him be, as a train goes round under the tree. A warm welcome to all friends and kin, so take your coat off and come on in. There's that cat, animated fire, and that train going around the tree. That animation really impressed me in 1985 or 6. The soldier and mouse are quite the craze, one dressed in costume, the other PJs. They march round together having fun, then playfully poke the cat and run. Winding up that toy soldier. Okay, somehow the toy soldier knows. There, poke. It's actually poke, just kind of lowers the gun. Oh, woke up that cat. The scared mouse, running to be free, grabs a limb and hangs from the tree. He calls for help, but tis all in vain, as he dangles from a candy cane. <laughs> Run, mouse. Then he hears a train whistle, never fear, chugging along with a cute engineer. The train arrives, it's his lucky day. He jumps in the caboose and rides away. <laughs> There's the cute engineer. I like the dissonant train horn, train whistle. That lucky little mouse just got away, as up on the roof he heard Santa's sleigh. Santa left his gifts for all in the house, with something special for the cat and mouse. You could hear him exclaim as he rode out of sight. Happy holidays to all, and to all a good night. Well, come on, Santa didn't say happy holidays. Merry Christmas! Next up is my song, Jolly Old St. Nicholas, the 1984 computer upgrade version. The first verse of this is the classic Christmas song, Jolly Old St. Nicholas. And then the second verse makes it into a sequel to the previous Commerce 64 Christmas song you saw. I'll let it play and then I'll have a few more comments about it. St. Nicholas, lean your ear this way. Don't you tell a single soul what I'm going to say. Christmas Eve is coming soon, now you dear old man. Whisper what you'll bring to me, tell me if you can. When the clock is striking twelve, when I'm fast asleep, down the chimney broad and black, with your pack you'll creep. I do love the computer that I got last year, but now would like some upgrades, please, won't you, Santa dear?
I would like my own disk drive Cassettes too slow to load And a big pack of blank disks On which to save my code Also get me a disk notcher To use the backside Yes, I know I could use scissors But this is quicker And looks much more nice So as you heard, the whole concept in this song is that last year I got a Commodore 64 and I got a cassette drive, but that's just too slow and old. I really want a disk drive for Christmas, please. And again, this is my son, Ben, being me, uh, you know, he's another year or two older, not much bigger. It's my friend, Richard Pepper. You've seen his uh, famous 1970s towel in a couple recent episodes. And since he's got a full Santa costume, he agreed to be Santa in this video for me. The idea here is that I'm writing a Christmas wish list on my Commodore 64, and somehow Santa can see that. And of course, Santa has a big stack of 1541 disk drives ready to give me one. Richard actually had some trouble there. Uh, <laughs> the 1541's pretty heavy to, to a palm like that. <laughs> I had just a couple more sealed five and a quarter inch disk boxes left use them for this video. And uh, that's my one disc notcher. Of course, I didn't have it packaged. And that's the incredible music keyboard overlay. It turns a Commodore 64 supposedly into like a musical keyboard, uh, but all it is is a plastic gadget that pushes down the corresponding Commodore 64 key under the plastic piano key. And part of the reason I had Richard wear those uh, ridiculous well, they're really just work gloves, red and white work gloves, so that my daughter could wear them while she played this keyboard solo with them on. So it looked like it was Santa playing it. Uh, of course, Ben has never actually uh, tried to double-side a floppy disk in his life, so I had to try and coach him on, on doing that as best he could. He did a, he did a good job there. <laughs> yeah, once I get the disk drive, I managed to fit in this little uh, side rant about how... Uh, a disc notcher is really nice too. So again, thanks to Richard Pepper and Ben for helping out with that goofy video. Okay, so next up we have Ash and Dave present Snowball Sunday, starring William Warmstart and friends. So Ash and Dave were a demo group from the UK who also went on to program some games. But they made some fantastic stuff and were very famous in the UK in their time. And I don't remember for sure when I first saw this, but this was also pretty amazing to me. In hindsight, well, you'll see. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, at the time, I thought this was amazing. It was like a mix of a game. Was it a demo? Was it a game? I didn't know you could do this. All right, you gotta wait for that. There we go, press space. Okay, so I'm the blue guy. And you bend, you duck down to grab some snow, and then you could throw snow. There, I got them. Oh, I got two! I got both of them on the first shot. But uh, it, it's kind of like a very, very simple fighting game. And that's that's all there is to it. So you, you got to bend down to uh, grab snow, but they all throw the snow too high. <laughs> I knocked that guy over. And they can kind of they can disappear off screen there. Okay, there they're throwing at me. That's kind of goofy. They just disappear off the screen for a while. So what's neat too is how this demo uses the borders. Right, get that right guy. Whoa, missed him. There. <laughs> So goofy. Anyway, you can see that the 
white kind of the hills extend off the screen there. It's kind of flickering at the side. It's probably because I'm running it. Because <laughs> I'm running an NTSC. But that was really cool how the screen is bigger than, uh, than normal. The, like it runs off the sides of the screen. Of course, the sprites don't actually go onto the sides, but at least they extended the uh, scene into the borders. <laughs> I like when you get them right in the back of the head. It's kind of funny how the ball goes up, so you can either shoot them really far away or really close. There, I got that far guy again. Yeah, you can change the songs with F3. And it starts flickering. I don't know if that's probably only a bug on NTSC. But the way the white is flashing, I think that'll help you see where the border normally is and how they've just cleverly, with raster interrupts, made the screen stretch across just by saying the border color to match the, the color inside the border. Shouldn't be so far. Hey, I got both of them in one ball again. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. The last of my songs for today is a procedurally generated Christmas song. I do not sing on this one, so uh, you might be really happy about that. So watch for the couple ways that this might be procedurally generated, and I'll talk about it more at the end. So this is an actual Commodore 64 that I recorded here. The lyrics I just put in a basic program that uh, displays the words one at a time and highlights the current word as it appears. So, you know, here it's saying the and Christmas is highlighted in white and so on. You know, the, the current word more or less matching the so-called singing and overlaid on top of it is a bunch of snowflakes and those are running a raster interrupt interrupt-driven code 
that's running on top of the basic program. So they're overlaid there. So this is completely a real Commodore 64 display that I programmed for this video. Now, as far as the procedural generation goes, what I did was I took a whole bunch of Christmas carols like Jingle Bells and uh, Winter Wonderland, uh, probably like a dozen different songs. And I threw them into something called Nile, N-I-A-L-L, -L, which was one of the coolest Amiga programs I had seen. It was written in Amos, which is a basic derivative. And it was like artificial intelligence. You would type things into it and that would reply to you using the words you had typed in, in new ways, forming new sentences. I didn't realize that really it's like a Markov chain. And it's just a very primitive form of uh, artificial intelligence, I guess you could call it. And they use the Amiga's speech device to speak it back to you. But we had so much fun with this, you know, when we were teenagers on the Amiga. So what I did was dump all the Christmas songs into a Markov chain. Actually, I found a Perl re-implementation of it that I ended up using because it was a lot more convenient that I modified a bit. And so all these Christmas songs went in. And then it started generating new lyrics out of those Christmas songs. And that's how you get these ridiculous lines like and stares at the jingle bell, rocking around the reindeer, I'll hate going out with me. And so all these phrases were generated automatically by the computer. And then I just kind of reordered them into something that seemed a little bit more musical to me and particularly pulling out that jolly Christmas. That's the years we can see. But you know, if I could only. Basically, the lyrics were procedurally generated and then I curated them, so to speak. Then I entered all those lines into SAM, the software automatic mouth, speech synthesis, and record all those lines and then just manually synced it up. Uh, my daughter and I recorded this, I don't know if you call this jazz or whatever music, and put the SAM speech on top of it, doing my best to just kind of make it as musical as possible. So the procedural generation is the lyrics, but the other procedural generation is those snowflakes. Essentially, each one, I just take eight random numbers, and that becomes the top left quadrant of each snowflake. And then the way I generate the snowflake is just to take that eight by eight completely random pattern and mirror it and flip it for the other three quadrants. And kind of amazingly, you end up with things that look fairly snowflake-like. They're just, uh, I believe, 16 by 16 pixels. But again, they are procedurally generated just through that simple pattern or that simple algorithm. Eight random bytes, mirrored and flipped, makes what I think is a pretty good snowflake. Each one unique. How about that? And here's a more recent one, Freeze 64 released this game by Mike Richmond a couple years ago. And the graphics, I believe those that's by Mike's daughter, Aurora Richmond. And basically you are Santa. Free 64 is an actual paper magazine you can subscribe to. Check it out. So here, we'll try playing this. So you're there, Santa and the sleigh, and you're just trying to drop presents into the chimneys. Whoop. Oh. A little while, get the rhythm there. So, you get like a hundred points each time you successfully drop a present in a chimney. When oh, there's that guy down below, I guess who's a robber, and knock him out. There he is again. Drop a present on his head to knock him out. Otherwise, he'll there, got him again. Yeah, and these big bats and stuff. I think you get 50 points if you knock out any of those uh, flying creatures that are in your way. And you get a hundred for dropping the uh, present down a chimney. Yeah, I like the parallax scrolling there. Those uh, lamp posts in the foreground. Fun music. There. Oh, yeah. And if those guys get you, then Santa guy gets knocked out for a while. Can't deliver any papers or any presents. <laughs> Thank you, paper boy. I'll let that guy get all the way across the screen, the robber at the bottom. Oh, there. He shoots you. Looks <laughs> like rockets or something. Yeah, 
Yeah, and basically the game's over if the, when the moon gets right across the sky. I guess Christmas night is over. So basically you just try to get the best score you can in the time. Too busy talking, I'm not going to get a very good score here. Okay, well, I ran out of houses. Pen home. There he goes. He scored 35.50, best score today. Press fire to continue. Merry Christmas from Free64, the Commerce 64 gaming, cheat, and coding fanzine. So yeah, check out Free64 and check out this game. There'll be a link in the video description below. Okay, I had a lot of fun looking at some of my favorite Commodore 64 Christmas-related things. Of course, there's many, many more. I'd be interested to know if you have any Commodore 64 Christmas traditions. I think a lot of people do. Christmas can be a very nostalgic time. And for those of us that grew up with Commodore 64, I think that has us thinking about our favorite times with our old computer. And for the closing credits, this is me playing bass at a Christmas gig a few years ago. We are kind of doing like a Christmas sing-along. And I don't know, I just put the camera on while I was playing. So that's what you can watch if you want to, or just skip it if you don't like it. 2021 has been a year of ups and downs. But thank you for watching. I hope some of my videos have entertained you during the year. Thanks to my patrons for their support. I'm looking forward to 2022. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.